Today, I'd like to talk about what I refer to as the last generation of entertainment. Now, you know, in the past, I've talked about the different generations and the fact that entertainment, i.e. escapism, has changed quite a bit in recent years, and generally towards the negative, as we've seen a major thrust towards wokeism and unnecessary IRL politics in games that are just generally reducing the quality of the games, not to mention really poor storytelling and just general poor quality and what I could only refer to as schlock when it comes to major AAA games, but also films to a lesser degree. And this is not a coincidence. Now, the core of my argument here and what we're going to be talking about is the fact that the newer generations, specifically the millennials and of course the Zoomers, have been coming of age and they have been assuming roles that were formerly occupied primarily, I'd argue, by Generation X. A friend of mine who isn't very involved in entertainment or games was joking with me when I mentioned that many of these changes that we can observe took place just 10 years ago, i.e. 2014. And most people would then think, well, why are you getting all nostalgic about that? Well, it's not nostalgia, and I made an entire video about this. This is not me reminiscing about the 1980s or the early 90s, although I could well do that as well, and that would be, I think, somewhat justified. But this is about a radical shift in the direction of things as pertains to entertainment vis-a-vis -vis culture and politics. And basically what I'm going to argue here is that the last generation is capable, desirous, and detached enough from IRL politics is Generation X, and to a lesser degree, older millennials. But once you start going into the mid-range of millennials or the Zoomers, then I have to say, and I hate to say it, all bets are off. Now, I'm not trashing all millennials here or all Zoomers. As you know, I'm Gen X, very much Gen X. That's not my intention. I'm not trying to say everyone is bad and Gen X is superior. This, in fact, has nothing to do with some kind of transhumanistic transition from Gen X to a different generation where the newer generations are somehow physiologically or cognitively incapable, but rather this has everything to do with ideological capture. Because you see, Gen X was the last generation to grow up pretty much without the internet, pretty much without all of the ideological fanfare and insanity that has gripped the hearts and minds of so many people, especially younger mid-millennials and above all Zoomers. And therefore, Gen X, as a consequence of this, is in a much better position to make quality entertainment, make quality escapism. I think most of us are in agreement that the best copes in life these days really are video games and to a lesser degree cinema. Life is cope, and so this is great cope when you have gripping stories, fun game mechanics, etc., etc. And I hate to say it, but these days, as I'm sure you've observed, AAA has become synonymous in the gaming world with junk, with trash. If I hear a game is coming out that's AAA, then my assumption is it's going to be pretty bad usually. This has been proven by Starfield. This has been proven most recently by this terrible game released by Rocksteady Studios, a formerly great studio. We'll get into that in a bit. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Now, it's very interesting because this dovetails what I've been saying that the two original founders of Rocksteady Studios, Jamie Walker and Sefton Hill, both Gen X, by the way, left the company after 18 years at that company as developers, as directors, directly during the development of this latest game, Kill the Justice League. What does that tell you? Well, I don't know if you've caught wind of this. I don't usually play these types of games, but it turns out Kill the Justice League is a pretty bad game overall. It's filled with the usual wokeism, the gameplay isn't that great, and the story, from my understanding, is terribly written. So this tells you a lot. Can we know 100% that they left for that reason? Well, no. But here's the thing. How do I know that non-Gen Xers are primarily responsible for pushing this stuff? Not in their entirety. Of course, there are always exceptions. For the simple reason of the passage of time. 
2014 is a time when some millennials come into their own, they get involved in the development of games, entertainment, etc., etc. If you were to go back, say, in the early aughts, a time of great gaming, great production, the millennials were children or teenagers, and that's fundamentally something different. You move forward to 2014, and now they're in their 20s. They're just starting off their careers. And as you move forward, temporarily speaking, what happens and what have we been observing for the past 10 years? Every year, things become more and more woke. They become worse and worse in quality. And what can we observe here? Those younger millennials are coming of age, getting involved in the entertainment industry, whether cinema or game development, until we arrive in 2024. And what can we observe? The same thing, only worse and worse and worse. As all these newest generations, including the oldest of Zoomers, are probably getting involved in these sectors and having a disproportional influence on the output simply because of their political slash cultural imperatives. Now, again, this is not a question of the species itself changing, but rather ideological or environmental shifts that unfortunately have influenced certain individuals, many individuals, I have to say, of generation, millennial, and Zoomers going forward in a very negative way. And again, you can do the math. You can track this. If you were born in 1988 and you just started getting involved in the entertainment industry, specifically game development, you started getting active around probably something like the mid-2010s, 2014, 15, 16. And then the younger millennials got involved if you were born, say, in 1992, and so on and so forth. So Generation X, the last generation not entirely embroiled in the insanity of our time, although some are admittedly, but most are not, probably, did not grow up with the Internet, not to the same degree, especially the older Gen Xs. And you can notice, I mentioned these founders of Rocksteady Studios, they departed, as I said, in the middle of the development of this Justice League game, and they have founded their own new studio, which is going to be, hopefully, a studio that produces good games. Let's hope the Gen Xers keep on producing stuff of quality going forward. Now, you also see this in film, when you think about the really good films that have come out over the last 20 years or so, I can really only count them on one hand. Think of, for example, Blade Runner 2049, also directed by a Gen Xer. Now, again, I'm not saying Gen X is somehow chosen. Gen X just got lucky. We got lucky because we didn't grow up with the undue influence of the Internet, and we did not grow up immersed in the crazy politics of the time. Now, there's another angle I want to talk about with respect to this issue. And that is a sad reality that seems to track onto the data and the research. And unfortunately, that is the fact that, generally speaking, when it comes to creative artistic endeavors, be it art, music, and these days more and more games and entertainment, it's typically people of a left-wing orientation that get involved in these things. Now, of course, there are exceptions. There are always exceptions. I always have to mention this because people bring up, oh, I know this person, John Smith, who he's a conservative and he works on games. And yes, of course. But broadly speaking, most people involved in these creative professions are left-leaning. And not to shock you, but this was also true in the 90s and early 2000s. It's just that liberals at the time were not completely insane. It's not like the people that made the great games of the late 90s and the aughts were arch-conservative, quite the opposite. They just didn't have this ideological capture software running on their minds. And so they produced games that were great and entertaining and fun and led to amazing moments of escapism because they understood that you don't always need to interject real-life politics into entertainment or games. You think about, for example, the Mass Effect universe, there's a ton of politics going on there, a ton of cultural issues, and yet it's all contained within the universe. Think about the Krogan and the Genophage and the Solarians. All that stuff is great and fascinating, and, and there's history behind it, and it takes place in the context of the universe. And that's what Gen X used to do. But this is an unfortunate thing about personality. If you read the research, it's absolutely true. 
The younger generations are going to be no different. It's going to be mostly left-wing, left-leaning people involved in creative endeavors, with a few exceptions. And unlike Gen X, they have been subjugated by the ideology of our time, and that is going to subvert everything they do and everything they put out and then produce for the public. And then we, the public, get the short end of the stick, unfortunately. Now, this is not the same thing as sort of conservatives being pushed out of academia. I think academia is a separate domain from creative entertainment. It's absolutely the case that in the academic realm, conservatives and more right-leaning people have been pushed out over the years because they're made to feel unwelcome, et cetera, et cetera. I just don't think that creative endeavors like art, video game production, things of this nature are really a conservative cause. They never have been. And so we're kind of stuck in a bit of a quagmire here because that's the personality archetype that tends to make these things. And I have a prophecy here, and I hate to make the prophecy, but if you think these younger and mid-millennials are bad, wait till the Zoomers take over this stuff. Because the Zoomers have grown up entirely with the internet. They don't know existence without the internet. And yes, there are a lot of quote-unquote base Zoomers out there. You probably know some. Maybe you're a quote-unquote base Zoomer. But the reality is, most Zoomers are quote-unquote not based. They're just as captured, if not far more so, by the ideology of our time than millennials are. And when they get involved in this stuff, guess how much worse it's going to be. If you thought what we've gotten up until now is pretty bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. And so we can thank the gods that hopefully Generation X is still operative for a while to come, and there'll be indie studios and what have you, Watch the sky, as it were. Watch the stars. Watch AAA. See what happens. The people getting involved in the production and the making of these games, not the officers, not the directors like God Howard or Phil Spencer, but the people actually making the stuff are the ones that matter. And they're going to inject their wokeism everywhere. They're not going to even think about it. They're just going to do it as if it's a reflex. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse with every coming year. I can not guarantee that. We are not at peak woke by any means in the general broad cultural sense, quite the opposite. These people who are the wokest, the youngest of millennials, the Zoomers, they're going to carry the torch of wokeism forward and it is going to burn more brightly than you could have ever imagined. And for the rest of us, that doesn't bode well. So as I said, the only thing we can hope for is quality entertainment from the oldest of the millennials and the Gen Xers who want to separate from this insanity and produce good quality stuff that people can enjoy, that people can escape to without all the ideological BS. You can forget the mainstream. You can forget AAA. It's over. As always, thank you for tuning in. Special thanks to my patrons, as always, and the people that donate to me on PayPal. You guys are the best. You keep the channel alive and going without you. I would be Dustin Ash. Thank you very much indeed. As for everybody else, you can leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe. I've heard it helps out the channel. Be much appreciated. Until the next time, may the gods watch over you. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.